transparent pine. Okay, now this graph looks like this. Why, why is it just like one arm? What can't be negative? The x or the y? Either. Either can't be negative. I can't put a negative under here because my domain restriction says take this, set it greater than or equal to zero. So therefore, my domain has to be only zero to positive. There's my domain. And I can't come out with a negative because the radical is already there. If you undo a square, then you're going to get a positive and negative. But when the radical is there, you get the positive, or whatever sign is outside of it. So therefore, the range also sets 0 to infinity. Okay. And it works the same as anything else we do. So say we put a negative in front of this. I put this negative here. When the negative is not next to the x, that means it's next to the y. It means whatever I put in for x, say I put in a 4, I take the square root of 4, I get 2, and I negate it. That's my y. My x is still a positive 2, but my y is a negative. My x is a positive 4, but my y is a negative 2. So this has an effect on the y. When the y goes from positive to negative, where is the reflection? x axis. So this gives me a reflection in the x-axis. So every point here will go like this. Did the domain change? Nope. Domain's still the same. Did the range change? The range is the opposite now. So it's negative infinity to zero. So the negative sign outside of the radical, where it's not next to the x, negates the y. It's real simple. Go from a positive y to a negative y. There's your reflection. When it's next to the x, then the x negates. It goes from a negative to a positive. It's a reflection in the y axis. It's a reflection in the y axis. When they both negate, where is my reflection? Cross the origin. Good. Good. The cubing function is very basic, crosses through, comes up. It follows the same thing as all your other transformations. So say I do. Where is that going to be transformed to? To the right, one unit. So to the right, we call it a horizontal shift. Right. It goes the opposite way inside the parentheses, one unit. So all you do is just, because we're sketching, we're not using the calc, just pick one point, like this point, and just move it over one and try to do this so that it comes through this. My artwork is terrible, so a lot of times my graphs look a little bit off. My depth perception is not that great, so we, we deal with it. <laughs> so you'll, you'll, you'll look a lot better. Did I change the domain or range at all? Did I change the domain? Oh, what was the domain for the original function? And the range. So did it change at all? Nope. Domain and range, still the same. Okay. That, that was not a bad one. It, it's a little bit more difficult to draw that one because it has that little squiggle in it, but that's not a bad one to, to deal with. Okay. And the last one, I don't know if you guys did these last year. Rational one. Do a rational function? No. no. 
So we do have a domain description. And what is our domain description for this one? Can't be zero. So our domain is going to be anything but zero. Which means we have an asymptote. X, when x is zero, I can't use it. So it means we have an asymptote. And when we graph this guy, it's going to graph like this. Here's your asymptote. And it's going to graph like this. So it's coming along from the left, but can't hit that wall. Then it continued and went over here. Okay. And basically, this is going to give us the same thing. If we, if we shift it over 1, it's going to work the same way. If we put it next to x, if we negate it and get the reflection. But we're going to do that one a little bit separately. What is the range for this? Negative infinity 2. <laughs> what happens right here? It doesn't hit that guy. It bounces over that. So it's got the same range and the same domain. And as we do this, we're going to see more rules for this. If the exponent is larger in the denominator than the numerator, you're going to see that your asymptote is y equals 0. But we're going to do that at another time. So kind of just all we need to do for this one is just get used to what this looks like. When you draw an asymptote, are you not supposed to have the arrowhead um, am I not supposed to have this? Well, no, what happens to this guy is it gets closer and closer and closer to this. <laughs> it never, never, never touches this, but it rides along it. So I just drew the arrow to say this continues to go up. It'll get closer and closer. And if you put this in your calculator, it looks like it stops. It looks like it does this. But it doesn't. It, the arrow just means this continues to go up. This continues to go down. Yeah, I know. I'm just I'm asking because I was supposed to draw it on one side, like the side that isn't extra. Really? I never heard that, but maybe that's a common core thing. Common core changes a lot of things. Maybe they change that. But really, this technically keeps on going, and it gets closer and closer to the asymptote. Did they explain to you what an asymptote does? No. What an asymptote does is it actually gives you a guideline for your end behaviors. We call this end behavior. I didn't want to get into it right now, but let's, let's just talk real quickly. <clears throat> An asymptote says, I'm going to have to guide this guy alongside here because it can never touch. Unfortunately, a horizontal asymptote, it can cross over, but it still comes back to guide alongside that asymptote. It doesn't stop. It goes on infinite, infinitely. But that's why we use arrows to show that it's still going. I don't know the concept of why they didn't use that arrow. But um, in this case, this is going to keep on going. This is going to this is going to approach this asymptote right here and get closer and closer and closer and closer, but never touch. Your your calculators, unfortunately, don't do it very much justice. Justice. But uh, I think the ones with the color look a little bit nicer because I think their lines are a little bit thinner and I think they actually anybody have a color? A color one? A throat? Yeah, my dad is a throat. Oh. Oh. Oh, wow. Because the color ones I think actually show an asymptote. And then this, this gets a little bit closer on the line, you can kind of see it. So the, the color ones do a nicer job, our calculators. But we'll get more into the end behaviors, as long as you understand what the rationals do. Okay, I summed up the, um, the rules for you. We talked about the rules, so I kind of summed them up for you. We said anything outside of the the x part, the parentheses, the absolute value, the radical, anything outside will be a vertical shift. And I need you to use the word vertical. Anything inside the parentheses, the radical, the absolute value, underneath the denominator, will be a horizontal shift. And that always works the opposite way. We're going to sketch and describe the transformations. 
without being calculated. And remember, these are sketches. So let's just talk one second for this. from here to here. Let's, let's draw this, this parabola. The domain for this parabola from zero <coughs> to infinity oh. negative infinity to infinity and zero to infinity my range. What's happening to this? It's stretching. It's stretching. But Gabby's saying this. So yeah, yeah, it does that. Lily's saying stretching. No, no, it's stretching because it's greater than one. It's stretching, but Gabby's doing this. And it looks like it's shrinking, but it's still stretching because watch what it does. It actually goes in here. Okay, hang on. Let's, let's talk about this for one second. Let's talk about this. This is always the confusing part. So in your parabola, this is the point one, one. A great one one. I put a one in for x. I get a one for y. Let's talk about the point one one. I put a one in for x. I get one squared is one times two is two. Ah, didn't that get larger? Isn't it getting larger and stretched? But it looks to me like it's shrunk. But in in reality, what it did does. What a dilation does is it changes your distance from zero. So if you look at the distance from zero, that's the part that's being stretched. The graph itself looks like a shrink. Now, here's the difference. This is called a vertical stretch. This by a factor of two. Okay. It's stretching it times two, not the x. It's called a rigid transformation. It only changes the y. What is one half? What is it by Of one half, and that will be a shrink, but it will actually go out like this, because it's changing the distance from zero. I'll throw that one up here in one second. The flip side of this, if you think about this, the flip side of this is a horizontal shrink by a factor of one half. Because when Gabby did this, where were her pants hands coming from? The horizon, like this. So was it horizontally she was shrinking it? So sometimes in a book or in a worksheet or whatever, they refer to it as a horizontal shrink, the opposite way. I tend to keep with the vertical just so we don't confuse everybody, but it could be it could be both ways. Generally what you're gonna see is, and this one you can't get in any closer to this, generally if it's inside the parentheses, if it's underneath the radical, they go with horizontal and sometimes you can bring it out. Such as this. If they did this, most books will go with the horizontal. But can't you do this? So then they usually say vertical. But either way, it is the exact same thing. I'll stick with the verticals, and you can stick with verticals. The verticals change by a factor of whatever that factor is in front. The horizontals are the opposite. So if you find your hands going from the horizon this way, that's a horizontal shrink. If you find your hand going like this, that's a vertical stretch. A vertical shrink, which Lily was just saying, if I put the one half, let's use the same point. If I put an x for one, what's my y value now? A half. So did it that shrink from one to a half? It's a shrink. It's a vertical shrink by a factor of one half, but it looks like this. One, one half. Oh, I can't get down here. One, one half. It's going to go like this. Vertically, we're pushing it down. We're shrinking it down. Horizontally, what are we doing horizontally? 
stretching it out by a factor of what? Two. So you see the difference? We can, we, we can call it either way. We'll stick with vertical. Unless anybody wants to give me a horizontal, just remember it's the opposite way with the horizontal. Good with that? I always find that to be confusing when kids start to look at this and they get confused because, especially when we were in the bus, in the bus, they use a lot of horizontals. And since I took the work out of the bus, you probably don't, I didn't even give you a book yet. So you probably don't even look at it yet. I, I might have had it in your notes that I gave you. Okay, so let's talk this. Start with your parent function. What's your parent function? That's squared. It's the squaring function. Minus x zero. Just pretend minus x zero. Domain again, all real numbers. Range, zero to infinity. What's this plus two doing? Two where? Up. Uh, if it's by the x inside the parentheses, it's a horizontal. Think of what where is x? X is here. So if it's by the x, it's here. If it's not by the x, it's a vertical. So we have a vertical shift up two units. And that's what I want you to say. Okay? So, if something is vertical, does it affect the x or the y? The y. So my domain is not affected, <coughs> but if it helps you come to the range and take this and put it right here, up two. So what is my new range? Two to infinity. Good. Use the original domain and range and apply the transformation to that. That works really well. This one, where is my change going to be? Horizontal to the left. Good. So this is going to come here and move over two. If I move horizontal, do I change the domain or the range? If I move the X, I change the domain, right? Well, technically, I change the domain. Did this domain change? Nope, because it was all real numbers, but technically, yeah, my domain will change. If it was your square, square root function, it would change, right? So we're kind of getting the hang of this. You had some of these last night. I'm just hitting a couple more. Reflection, just think of your reflections again. If it's next to the x, it's a reflection in the y axis. Make your finger go from top to bottom. Okay? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Make your finger go left to right. If it's a reflection here, not next to x, it affects the y. The x doesn't change. If I put a 1 in here, my y becomes negative 1. So there's your reflection in your x-axis. And I think this is the one that we did. What about this one? If this is my original function, where is this reflection? The y-axis, so what's it going to look like? It's just going to be this guy over there. It's going to look like a little bird. Right? So what changed? When I went horizontally, what changed? Domain. domain. So what is my new domain now going to be? My old domain was 0 to infinity. What's my new domain for this guy? Negative infinity to 0. It's just the opposite way. Because you flipped it over that way. But I want to see reflection in the y axis. Say that again. This. This reflection in the y axis. The x negates. This was our original parent function. Square root. And then we took the negative and put it here. If you did this, watch. Use your rule. This says. Negative x has to be greater than or equal to zero. 
If I divide by a negative 1, x is less than or equal to 0. Doesn't my domain become negative infinity to 0? Don't I follow the same rules for restriction? It's my restriction rule. We just did it with a reflection. It all has to tie together. Everything that you do has to tie together. Here's the horizontal and the vertical. So we just talked about that. If it's greater than one, it's a vertical shift, a vertical stretch. If it's, now be careful of this. If it's a fraction between zero and one, it's a vertical shrink. What does this mean? It's a reflection. Okay, over the x-axis and a a stretch, a vertical stretch. This is not a stretch of negative two. You can't have a stretch of negative two. You can have a stretch of anything positive, but the negative is the reflection. So it has two transformations in it: a stretch and a reflection. Okay. A reflection over the x because it's going to change your y, so your y is going to have to bond. But I want you to make sure you don't say a negative to reflect on a stretch. It's a reflection and a stretch. And then we talked about that. So I think that's all good. By a factor of? Mm -hmm. Of whatever, yes. Yeah. Whatever is there. Of two, of one half. A vertical strength by a factor of one half. Whatever the number is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So in other words, if we put that, if we did this, I want you to say a vertical strength by a factor of three fourths. If you said a horizontal stretch, you'd have to flip that to four thirds. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Keep the verticals. I'm fine with verticals. Some books like the horizontal. Uh, would you look these up? Some books like the vertical. Okay. There's a big one. We're going step by step. So, Sarah, what's my parent function? Sarah, what's my parent function? Where, where do I start? What's my core function? My core graph? What's my core Cubic. This is my cubic function. So, let's work this together, guys. Here's your basic cubic function. Yes, it does. We have to follow order of operations. Most times, no, but every once in a while, there's a reflection. You do a shift and a reflection, and then order matters. It's usually a reflection and a shift that gets a vertical shift that gets the top of all the time. So, the original, we said all real numbers. So, we don't have to worry about this anymore, right? <coughs> so, anything we do to this, is it going to change the domain or the range? No. So, that's a nice one. Now, when you work your transformation, follow order of operations. So go to the X. What's the first thing I would do to this? I would add 7, so I'm going to go left, 7 units. God bless you. So let's bring this to the left, 7 units. So say I'm over here. So try to just make your graph follow this. So what I would do is this. I would say this is my first one. Horizontal shift. Left seven units. Now, in order of operations, okay, I took the x, I added seven. I come out here. What's the next thing I do? Uh, that's my function. I would multiply by three fifths. Ignore the negative right now. That would be a vertical shrink, yes, and it's going to push this out a little bit. So, it's kind of going, it's a little bit weird. This one's going out here. 
So wait, this one's going, I told you I think of this. This one's going up here. This one's going down here. It, it, oh, it just shrank. Okay, so I had it right the first time. I, I told you I have no spatial quality in me, none. I have to do everything by the numbers. Some people have a very hard time with depth perception, that's me. If you show me something and you say, what picture do you see? Or you know those little crazy boxes and you, you see a picture behind it? I see nothing. When I take a driver's test, they, are dark. they drive me crazy. But what are you gonna do? I have no depth perception. <laughs> when I played softball, I couldn't play outfield because I constantly got smacked in the head with the ball. I cannot tell where it's coming from. I can only play infield. <laughs> So it supposedly looks like this. It's a sh it's a shrink. So the shrink pushes it out. So it'll go like this. See this green? It'll go like that. Okay, so let's get to the negative. So the second thing we did was a vertical shrink by a factor of this this one no this one has no factor this one's just a, a shift seven unit here start with your x this one just is a shift seven unit i don't know where my equation went to come it just disappeared, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a thing. I don't understand. I told you my board is blunted. I have a blunted board. Yeah, so now, okay. So here was our original equation. I'm sorry. It's constant, this board. It's a challenge. <laughs> okay, so now, let's address the negative. It's a reflection where? X-axis, because it's not next to the X, it's next to the Y. So the Y is going to change from positive to negative. So that is a reflection in the X-axis. It means you're going to reflect this over this X-axis. So this piece is going to come down here. Just Go like this, guys. Watch. Watch. Take a point here and just make it like this. So this piece is going like this, and this piece is going to go like this. Do your reflection one piece at a time. It's mad sloppy. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. It is. So only work one arm. Lily, watch. Work, work one arm at a time. Just do this arm first. Get it? And then do this arm. It's, it's, it's not just me, right? It's not just me. Okay. Now. Yeah, well, it's just a sketch. This guy, what does the minus 5 do? How do we say it? How do we say it? Thank you. Okay, so now, how do we shift this thing down by it? Pick one point. Pick this point right here. We never moved off the axis, right? Just bring your pen down five units and try to trace this. Ta da! This is our final one. Final one. Now, if you graphed it, it should be down in that lower third quadrant. Um, what do you mean 2x? No, because we, we use your core graph, yeah. so we stick to like whether it's square to square, uh, yeah, uh, you know, cube root. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, we don't make it any more difficult than this. Could you? Oh, well, I wouldn't. Yeah, you, you have to go back to a core graph each time to start there. So. Unless you made a complete square or do something like that to get a vertex point, you could absolutely. Do you know that your vertex points are your transformations when you put it in vertex form? 
Do you guys remember putting your quadratus yeah. in vertex form? Yeah. And it was, um, yeah, x minus 8 squared. There was a, an a out here, yeah. plus k. Oh, Do you realize this is your, these are your transformations? Oh, yeah. Because this is your horizontal shift, this is your vertical shift, this is your stressor shrink. So when we have you put it in vertex form, it's, it's the same thing. Yeah. This when you, well, because you complete the square and you put it in vertex form. Because Graham was saying that we have two x's, but if we did, we would have to get back to this form. And then graph it that way. And that's, that's very graphical. Okay, questions on this whole big mess? No. I took, well, I just gave you the basic ones, the easy ones. The squaring is like by far the easiest one to do. Actually, the cubing is not bad because you never change your domain and your range, but that little squiggle in there is a little difficult when you're reflecting. Okay, so I, I start with my parent, my squaring function. We get a vertical shift up to. With each one of these, you understand, go back to the original, right? This one is a horizontal shift, right to unit. Good, make sure you're using the correct word. Horizontal, vertical shift, um, vertical stretches, by factor of, reflection, x and y axis. You can abbreviate the reflections, that's fine. Okay. Again, we started with, this time they started with a negative one. It came from your original squaring one. It came from this one. This negative just gave it a reflection, so they wanted you to start with reflecting it in the x-axis. <coughs> if I did this, are those reflections different? Are there other reflections or are the graphs going to be different? Yeah. Graph it on your calculator. Let's see. Graph. <laughs> are they going to be different? I got a couple of yeses, a couple of noes out there. Oh, no, I'm putting it here. Yeah, I just give, gave you a basic one first. Okay, put this in, guys. Okay, so I've got I've got three graphs coming out here. I should see three graphs, right? Let's see what we see. Maybe. Here's my first one. There's my second one. Well, see my third one. And there's my second one. Okay? So my first and my my first and my second are the same, right? My third down here. Right? Don't get confused with squaring that negative. It's still a reflection first. Because you're gonna start with your order of operation. Okay, so don't get confused with, oh, I'll square it, make it a positive. Then you got rid of the negative. So it's a reflection first. Okay? So you can see it off of your calculator. Just something to throw out there. All right. These guys, we're okay with those. Okay, so this one. So here's the difference. Did we get a vertical shrink by a factor of one half? Did we get a vertical stretch by a factor of four? Not two, because the square is outside. Four. This is where they call it a horizontal because they put it inside, but it's still a stretch or a shrink depending on which way you look at it. You're going to, you, well, if it's inside, square. It's a four, by a factor of four. Yes. A horizontal stretch of by a factor of two. 
if you go horizontally, it switches it, right? Because if you think about this, where's which one is the original? The black one, right? So this guy here is my red one. So if you're saying stretch, could you stretch by a factor of one half? Right, you have to stretch by a factor bigger than one. So you have to switch it, because isn't this horizontally pulling it out? Okay, vertical shrink, horizontal stretch, but then you have to flip your factor. Okay. Um, absolute value, everybody okay with this? Absolute value, the only one, which one changed the range on this? Which, which one is that, first, second, or third? Second. So a vertical shift caused your range to change. So we're good with this? Okay. These guys I gave you to go off the graph. No, no, I'm going to give you those tonight. But these guys are going to go off the graph. Just to, I think you did this a lot in Algebra 2. They gave you graphs, didn't they give you graphs and how you move the points? That's usually like an Algebra 1 on the test. Algebra 1, believe you or not, does that on your regions. And then these guys you shouldn't have any problems with. Okay. All right. 